Hey everyone, in this century we'll be taking a look at Maximilian Zorin, otherwise known as Max Zorin, from the James Bond film A View to a Kill. If there was ever a villain that was born to be evil, Max Zorin would be it. Most of the Bond villains throughout the 50-year franchise could be easily deemed psychopaths, but other than Zorin, none of them can be said to bear that label from the time of their exit from the womb. While A View to a Kill has been regarded as one of the weaker Bond films, but quite unfairly so, Max Zorin remains one of its redeeming aspects, in large part due to the inherent charisma of Christopher Walken. A man of vast wealth, Zorin made his fortune in oil and gas, but given the bits of information we have about his past exploits, combined with his current affairs, Zorin's wealth is one that is built on a web of lies and deceit, and stained with the blood of countless innocents. As with most psychopaths, Zorin is a pathological liar, but his deceit is subtle and appears to be covered by naturalistic causes. Two of such past instances stand out. The first is from Bond's conversation with CIA agent Lee, where we hear of his past exploits in a South African gold mine, which resulted in the death of 20 miners after a cave-in. But based on Zorin's behavior later at Project Mainstrike, this cave-in could be just the cover story for Zorin's act of cleaning house. The second is a less blatant means of underhanded tactics, namely Zorin's use of a rigged proxy fight to obtain the controlling shares of Stacey Sutton's company and then buying her out for only $5 million, a fraction of the company's worth. Zorin appears to have three main interests in the film, namely the practice of martial arts, his inclination towards computers and technology, and horse riding slash breeding. Zorin's interest in competitive horse racing is another avenue of his evil, where he shrewdly uses a microchip implanted into his steed for a secretly timed injection of steroids to give it a winning edge. But beyond just cheating, Zorn adds murder as the figurative cherry on top of his crimes here. When he orders the death of the investigating detective hired to look into the suspicion around his horse. Coincidentally, Zorn's morality is tied to the use of steroids, not through personal usage, but from the circumstances surrounding his birth. He was the product of a World War II human experiment that was later adopted by the KGB, in which steroids were given to pregnant women so that their offspring would have high IQ. The few cases that succeeded did produce high IQ offspring, but with the side effect of psychopathy. Perhaps Zorin's financial success is a result of both of these traits. His IQ gives him sharp business acumen and his ability to speak five languages, while him being a psychopath causes him to have no regard for right and wrong, allowing him to easily make the unethical but profitable decisions. The chief of these decisions would be Zorin's evil master plan, Project Mainstrike, in which he intends to artificially create an earthquake along the San Andreas Fault to cause the destruction of Silicon Valley, giving him and his associates an oligopoly over the production and distribution of the microchip industry. Never mind the deaths of millions caused, as long as he's able to greedily add billions more to his account. And never mind the fact that he's already living like royalty in a French chateau with an army of servants at his disposal. Later, Zorin would credit his high IQ in the course of his evil as he comes up with a cover story for the death of Bond and Stacy at City Hall. He labels it as intuitive improvisation, the secret of genius. But it's hardly innovative given that all his improvisation usually involves murder as a quick solution. Zorin's greed is also seen by his extortion, in which he would demand the lofty sum of $100 million from his associates plus half their net income. There isn't much choice in the matter, as any who drop out of his deal will be literally dropped out of his blimp, which he later uses as a pun to keep them in submission. Zorin has a way with words and appears to be rather secure of his position. The fact that he believes he can defiantly walk away from the KGB bears testament to this fact. Later, when the play of disguise with Bond and Zorin is over, 
Bond warns Zorin against killing him, with the threat that MI6 knows of his whereabouts and will retaliate if he doesn't report. Interestingly, this was a trick that Connery's Bond used successfully with Goldfinger, but this threat doesn't deter Zorn at all, with him retorting with the insult that if Bond was the best they had, they would likely seek to cover up his incompetence. There is a reoccurring theme of humble beginnings with Zorin, who himself has a rags to riches story, being a KGB agent gone rogue and now part of the wealthy elite. This is also seen with his choice of his horse for the races, an inferior breed but has become enhanced with the use of steroids. And finally, this theme of humble beginnings is again demonstrated with Zorin's main focus, the valuable silicon microchip made from sand, which he compares to the process of alchemists trying to make gold from base metals. As a psychopath, Zorin displays some rather disturbing behavior, the least of which is how quickly his expression can change from serious and stoic to one that is gleefully relishing in evil. As we move up the ante, we come to his lack of regard for human life and his penchant for violence. Killing millions for his own profit is already despicable, but what's even worse is the fact that Zorin derives pleasure from indulging his murderous side. After the commencement of Project Main Strike, he goes on a shooting spree, slaughtering the workers who have been nothing but loyal to him. It's likely that he was doing this to cover up his tracks and tie up any loose ends, but the apparent joy that is seen on his expression leaves no doubt as to how deranged he is. Apart from his workers, not even those closely associated with him are spared, as Zorin is quick to write them off. Even though May Day was still underground, serving his purposes, he still triggers the explosives, although it would mean killing her, chalking it up to a convenient coincidence. This might seem rather cold-hearted, especially since May Day was his romantic interest throughout the film. And while she is angered by this treatment, believing that Zorin actually loved her, this betrayal should actually come as no surprise, as a man that is willing to loan out his lover to another man is unlikely to be truly loyal to her. We see this earlier when Zorin gave Mayday his approval to take care of Bond personally. But there is another possible aspect that accounts for how Zorin can easily write her off. The name Mayday is derived from a French word meaning help me and used by pilots as a distress signal. If Zorin was the one who gave her that name, then maybe for all purposes, Zorin has always seen her as merely the help, hence the ease at which he sacrifices her. Apart from that, perhaps Zorin's cold-heartedness comes from his lack of familial relations in his childhood. Being a lab experiment for the KGB, he was likely taken away from his biological parents and spent much of his time in a lab being trained for espionage from a young age. This is supported firstly by how close he is with Klob, the scientist behind the experiments, and the one person he appears to be emotionally close with in the film. Secondly, we hear a KGB agent mock Zorin as a biological experiment and a physiological freak. In response, without any instruction from Zorin, Mayday proceeds to teach the man a lesson, as if this kind of insult has happened before and she automatically knows how Zorin would want her to act. If this insult could happen in his adulthood, it's no far stretch to assume that Zorin would have faced similar insults in his childhood. The lack of parental affection, combined with a steady stream of ridicule in his youth, would have given a young Zorin even more cause to have issues as an adult beyond his pre-existing inclination to being a psychopath. But despite that, Zorin is still capable of some limited affection. Apart from the previously mentioned relationship with Klob as a father figure, Zorin has a soft spot for his horse Misty, which he keeps a portrait of in his study. At the end, Zorin's act of betrayal towards Mayday becomes his undoing as his scorned lover turns against him and helps to foil his plan. Despite his supposed high IQ, his foolishness in attacking Bond resulted in his demise. Bond was helplessly dangling off the blimp, and Zorn could simply sit back and do nothing 
while waiting to reach his destination. Perhaps it's fitting that before his death, he would chuckle in defeat as he realizes his impending doom, a final sign of his deranged state. Overall, Zoran was a villain with no redeeming traits, but in a sense, he was a tragic victim of another evil stemming from the atrocity of human experimentation. Was he evil? Undoubtedly so, but did he have much choice in the matter? Perhaps on an equal note with our inability to condone his actions, the answer is just as much a no. So what do you think of Max Zorin from A View to a Kill, folks? And which Bond villain would you like to see covered next? If you enjoyed this video, check out this other video on another Bond villain here. Thanks for making this a part of your day, and take care.